Commander and President of Air University. Carry on, please. Carry on. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. How y'all doing? Great. Okay, so you're not allowed to sit in the far back, so you got to go and see. Come on in, please. Have a seat. Chief, come on up here with me, please. Just like church. If you're late, you got to sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's ceremony. We gather to mark the opening of the Air University Teaching and Learning Center and the reopening of the Air University Press Bookstore. Today's event will include uh, remarks from Lieutenant General Quas, the Commander and President of the Air University, the Director of the Teaching and Learning Center, Dr. Gould, and the Director of the um, Director of the Air University Press, uh, Dr. Hayden. Following the remarks, we'll actually have the official opening with the ribbon cutting ceremony. And from there, we'll move to a mixer outside in the cafeteria here, and also informal uh, walkthrough of the TLC facilities and the bookstore. At this time, before we get started, please make sure your cell phones are on silent and electronic devices as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Quast, Commander, Air University. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for being here. So as we all know, when you try and uh, have an aspiration to do something world class, you have to have a, a center of gravity, a place where you are coming back and having a touchstone so that there is somebody held accountable uh, to uh, helping all of us evolve and contribute with the leading edge thinking in our world uh, in the way we do whatever enterprise we do. For me, that's what this uh, center is all about. This center is a place where everybody in this university can come, and it's a touchstone to see what the latest research is in how we learn, how we teach, how we can reach another human mind and develop its habits in a way that are productive to the purpose that we all are trying to achieve in this university. And uh, so this has been a long time coming. And I know that there's a lot of places in this university that do this organically and uh, within your own uh, doors. But having a central place where people can come together and talk about ideas, where we can explore with new technologies and new techniques, where we can share uh, collaboratively innovative techniques that we find in other parts of the world and the country and apply them in different ways that are uh, meaningful to this university can be a huge benefit but only if people understand the power of it and actually contribute to it. So my charge for this organization is to be so fun, so sexy, and so full of interest that people want to come here. That when somebody is coming to this university, they already know the buzz is on the street, that they need to come here and take a look at what's here because it's a candy store of opportunity. And it's a place where you can practice your skills as a teacher and practice your skills as a learner to become better at your craft. So for me, I am deeply grateful for the work that's gone on here. I want to thank personally Tony for your leadership and your uh, demonstrated tenacity at uh, getting somewhere meaningful despite the fact that the resources were not always there. Uh, the people were not always there, and that we are living still in a very austere environment with regard to resources, yet we have important things we have to get done. So my deep gratitude to you, Dr. Hayden, for all your help as well, and for a whole host of people that have been helping behind the scenes uh, to uplift this effort and to create something. And I'm also mindful that a bureaucracy always tries to spit out something that's new, okay? So I understand. Uh, that this will be a new battle rhythm for this university. And I want you all to take away from this a, uh, a promise, a covenant, that you will help with this new habit of talking about this place, bringing new people to this place, coming here yourself and experiencing and asking them to help you. And I'd like to end and then give the floor back by just acknowledging Matthew Stafford and his efforts and his leadership and his vision and also our prayers with him uh, for his mother who passed away, uh, which is the reason he's not here. Uh, this is a family business that we're all in, and, uh, and uh, 
I know that he's in your thoughts as well. Uh, and he'll be back uh, soon uh, and, uh, and be probably the happiest person on this campus for this uh, center and, uh, and probably be a frequent flyer uh, himself. So thank you for being here to celebrate this. Thank you for understanding its power and potential at this university. And most importantly, thank you for making it a part of your battle rhythm, of your habit pattern, and spreading the rumor and the goodwill that this place is meaningful and will help all of our teachers be better teachers as we go forward. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for giving me the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Please forgive me. Uh, I do want to make sure I don't miss a lot of things about the TLC, and there are a lot of things going on, so I'm going to read a little bit. First, sir, thank you very much for coming today. We greatly appreciate it, Chief, and all the senior leaders and everyone that's here. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to learn, uh, you know, and help us kick this thing off. Uh, it, it has been a, a, while, a while coming, although we've been doing lots of other good things in the meantime. Uh, and the good news is I think it's, it's here now. And as the uh, general says, with your help, I think it'll be a success. Uh, and ordinarily, Dr. Stafford would be here, but, and so we do miss him here. Um, there, you know, there's several purposes for a talk. Today, I want to be a little bit informative because I want to tell you about the TLC and also be a little bit persuasive because, as General Claus says, we need to convince and motivate and get on people's affective side about what we're doing here. And, and the only way we can be successful is, is, is if other people pitch in and help us. So uh, a little information and then maybe a little, a little please help us out. Um, TLC's mission in simple terms is to, you know, at AU enhance our faculty's ability to teach and our students' ability to learn. You know, that's the, that's the straightforward, simple mission. But uh, as we've been doing this, and we've been doing this for a couple of months actually already, um, it's clear that we're doing a little bit more in terms of creating opportunities. Um, we're, we are, uh, we are sharing opportunities, bringing people together, bringing programs together. So there's opportunities, you know, and the big word is collaboration. We have already seen that and we are already doing that. Uh, there's also opportunities though um, uh, that we're seeing here in, in terms of identifying hidden learning resources. As in, and we've gone a few places, I'll, I'll list a few of them for you in a minute. Uh, but as we go around, we see people doing things that would be very be beneficial for learning not just there, but across the university, and yet they're hidden. People don't know about them, and people don't share them. So perhaps that mission set of, of teaching and learning is great, but we'll be able to do a little bit more in terms of connecting people together and connecting resources and programs together as well, which I think is invaluable. Uh, when I say we, there are currently three of us. Myself as the director, Dr. Shane Duncanson, who's uh, the lead uh, for our writing lab, and Mr. Doug McCarty, who is our uh, instructional system specialist. And, and does a million other things really well also. So thanks, thanks to these two. And you will see us, uh, if you haven't already seen, if you've already seen us, thank you. If not, you will see us. We will come visit all of you, I guarantee you. Um, you know, the big question is, uh, after you hear all this good stuff about missions, is well, how are you gonna do that? You know, that's the question. So if, if you would, I wanna take a few minutes to uh, share our, perce our perception uh, of the roles and the responsibilities and the capabilities of the Teaching and Learning Center. Um, and I have a bunch of them, and I won't go through all these, obviously, but uh, this will be online, we'll, we'll put this online, and you can, and you can certainly go through it. Uh, clearly, faculty development is a big one uh, that, uh, in our mission sets, one of our uh, functions and roles, and uh, we're gonna develop lessons and presentations to promote faculty development and curriculum development. Uh, we're gonna have an extensive indexed online archive of resource resource materials for faculty development, which will be a great one. And Mike McKim has, has been a great help in, in uh, helping us work through that. We're gonna identify and conduct events that will promote faculty development. And uh, you know, if someone uh, requests it, we'll, we'll come do assessments and try and help your programs with, with what we've learned and what our knowledge is. And then on the student side, uh, we definitely wanna help students learn. There's certainly lots of things we can do, but where we'll focus with first, uh, is teaching, teaching students how to learn. Uh, I, as an instructor myself, and I, and I know all the faculty in the room can tell you that they find students, uh, two things, they don't, many times, not all of them, some of them are great, many times don't know how to study or don't realize why they're studying. How, how do we take notes? How do you read a long book and get, and get the nuggets out of it, get the real ideas out of it without wasting hours and hours and hours? 
we will work at trying to get those ideas across to people. Um, and second, the writing lab, and, and that's been something uh, we've done uh, kind of ad hoc at AU and done a great job with War College and ACSC has done it. And uh, Shane is already working full speed, uh, developing something that's not going to replace what's already here. Please, not going to replace it. It's going to augment and support it and try and spread the, this, this goodness out across the entire university. Because again, the scope of this thing is everywhere, both resident, DL, uh, PME, PCE, uh, ROTC, all of it. So uh, it's a big deal. Um, and I mentioned the events. We're going to promote and uh, host collaborative events, and a lot of them if, if we get our way. We'll have something going on up here probably every week. Uh, and I, I'm, I say that you know, it's kind of a, that's kind of a, maybe ambitious. But I will tell you, I talked to a lot of people in the last couple months, and I have a lot of people that have told me, yeah, I'll come up and talk for 30, 45 minutes on what I know. And you know, it's not going to be real formal. It's not going to be, well, you know, you have, where we're going to put a burden on people. But we'll let them come share their information, and we are ex excited about that. And along those lines, we're also going to create a group called TLC Crosstalk. And I have already invited a number of people, and I'll invite more, 25 or 30 folks. You know, they won't all show up every, every uh, month. I think it's going to be a monthly thing. But it's going to be another informa information sharing mechanism that we really need here on the academic side for, for education. Uh, some of that crosstalk happens at the higher levels, down at the worker bee, down at the maybe in middle level. Uh, doesn't happen as much, so we're going to hit that. Um, some of you are familiar. We have a services contract that, that we have for now, and we may have for a while more. We'll be able to hire some expertise if we need it, maybe in, increase the capacity. We just the few of us here, you know, we'll have lots of expertise, but we won't have much capacity. So if we if we have to be doing over here doing this, we won't be over here to help you with that. And so the contract will be uh, along those lines. Um, learning technology and what Mr. Baker, uh, we're going to do two things. One one is two big ones. One is training, and a lot of you are familiar that we're doing uh, hub training. We're doing lots of other training. We'll do Adobe products training, Microsoft products training. We'll, we'll do training on whatever makes sense for us to do for the university in that learning technology mold. Um, we'll also be doing some research uh, in terms of going out and looking at products that make sense, that are uh, you know, feasible for Air University to work, and make, they're appropriate for Air University in terms of education, what might work in either departments or in the, the classrooms or whatever. So we'll be doing some research. Um, training and research for learning technology, and, and, and kind of to help that out, we need some uh, resources, some physical resources to do that. So we're going to, we, as you go through, you'll see a, a place over here um, where we're going to set up a, a, a lab to do a little bit of that. It'll have some high performance workstations with the softwares that we're talking about. It'll have some cameras and uh, projectors and things, and, and the, the intent there is to teach people how to use those products in building curriculum in the classroom in uh, teaching and learning, basically. So that'll happen. Other facilities we have, and, and we do have some great ones up here. I know, uh, I'm glad to see everybody's here. There may be a couple of folks out there still wandering around. We put up a lot more signs, but uh, it, it's kind of hard to find us up here. But when you do get up here, we've got some neat stuff. Uh, if you can, before you go, take a look at the classroom. Uh, that used to be cubes. Uh, we did a lot of good work, it's a nice classroom. We have an idea lab. Um, the hub sitting there right now, it, it's not done. Uh, we, we still have a lot more ideas to go in there. There's going to be some reconfigurable furniture, whiteboards. I mean, and, and I will tell you, that space is already being used a lot. Uh, we also have our uh, cafe out here, which you've seen, and of course this auditorium. Uh, so there's a lot of resources up here, and they're get, getting used a lot. Finally, I guess, uh, in terms of these, these things that we're going to do, it serves as a focal point. And I guess I've kind of um, in, uh, not explicitly, but kind of uh, made that point. Uh, we, we are going to go around and touch bases all over the place and uh, share information with people. And not only at AU, but externally at AU. And we've already been doing a lot. We, we've talked to the ADL folks, we've talked to the CGSC folks, <coughs> NDU folks, uh, uh, even Dr. Fajardo from uh, the Philippines was here. You know, we're, we're talking to them. So we're talking to all kinds of people, and we will share. We will share those things through our online presence and through a newsletter and through the crosstalk. So, you know, it's great to do those things, but if you don't share them and get them out to everybody, they're, they're not much good. Uh, that's my pitch. Uh, sorry, I hope I didn't take too much time with that. 
one other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, I keep saying we're, we have been doing things. We have. We transformed the classrooms, as I mentioned. We've remodeled offices. We've gone out and begged people for furniture and kind of things. So we, we've done a, a, a lot of work physically to get this place up and running. And, and it turned out to be a good thing because in the last 60 days, we have had over 500 students come through here. Over 500, which is for a startup group like this is absolutely amazing. Uh, We've had ACSC Cyber School, uh, Cyber College, CCAF, SOC. The LREC is going to do their, uh, for uh, culture and language, LREC is going to be up here too in the future. So um, I won't go through all these, but uh, there's a lot. And uh, uh, we, we uh, you know, we have a lot of work ahead, but uh, we're excited to get to it. Uh, really excited about it. So we'll, I think we're, we've got a great team. And um, again, if we, if we uh, met with you before, thank you. If we didn't, we will soon. So uh, with that, thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Hayden uh, for the <laughs> Air University Press. Yeah, you all thought we were done. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Jim Quas, Chief, my old boss, El Peck, Dr. Gould, Tony. I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words. Um, I'm representing the Air University Press because this is a dual opening. Official opening of the bookstore, the official outing of the new moniker, the Air University Press representing the render a new era. Um, I'm sure that uh, none of you have, it, it's escaped you that TLC also has an alternate meaning, tender loving care. <laughs> and while Many of us who have served in uniform in the military think that's a little too touchy-feely. I'm not quite down with that. Uh, it's probably not inappropriate of how we deal with our faculty and staff to give them the care and feeding that they need to take them to the next level. And this is an organization that has been missing in this university for a long time. It starts small, but watch it. It will grow. I don't know about you, I feel very much at home up here because I walk the halls and not just because Dr. Gould and I go back well over a decade here at Air University um, working together, but uh, I walk into the offices and much of the furniture was mine, <laughs> my old furniture. So I do feel very much at home up here. Um, but uh, one thing I want to talk about now is, is the, the press and the bookstore. The press is entering their 64th year, which is really kind of neat. Founded in September of 1953. It has moved around this university from organization to organization to organization. But the one thing they've done is stay true to their mission. Their mission is air power and students. Now, they've been doing a very good job about the air power piece over those past almost now 64 years, coming up on that this year. The student piece has been more difficult. Now, before we had the internet, it was only a physical bookstore. And where is the bookstore? Well, it's moved three times since I've been here. First, it was out near the flight line. Then it was in building 693, which is not a bad location because you could tell where's the, where's the bookstore. Well, it's near the helicopter. And there's only one of those on base. But if you really want to take care of resident students, it needs to be right here in the center of the hub of the resident academic programs. Now, one of the fortunate things is we recognize that the press and the bookstore is not just about the resident students. It's also about taking care of our distance learning students. And the internet has enabled that. So that is, this is a bookstore that is open 24-7, literally, worldwide, and physically where it finally needs to be in the center of the resident hub of this university. So I look forward to the growth of the bookstore and to our students flocking to the books. And General Quas, thank you. So that is the beginning of our future, a great opportunity which the press and the bookstore are grasping onto right now. With that in mind, 
when we complete here, I encourage all of you to go down to the bookstore. It's just downstairs on the east end of this building. Also very appropriate because the sun rises. It's the first part of Air University Library, the Mystery, that is lit. Mm -hmm. And so, not only does it have the favor of General Quas and the leadership being placed on the east of the building, God smiles on it every morning. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Governor. Okay. Cut that ribbon. As we cut this ribbon, it's uh, fitting when you begin something like this to set a vision, kind of a stretch goal. This has been something that I've been looking forward to uh, for two years, and that is the stretch goal is that we have a Starbucks coffee shop here as well, whether it's down at the bookstore or up here, to be the honey that attracts all the bees around the place. Okay. Get a photo. Get a Okay, are you ready on three? So this is the moment. One, <laughs> two, three. Woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, concludes the formal portion. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, um, uh, bear with me. Please stay after this. Don't just leave. I know a lot of you have work to do. <laughs> so once we leave here, there's a mixer out there. I know it's a, after lunch, but there's a lot of great food and a lot of hard work in putting that together. So please join us uh, for, some, uh, for some snacks and some uh, camaraderie here as we continue the informal celebration of, of the grand opening. But also, uh, as uh, Tony said, there's a lot of good facilities in here and kind of seeing it and, and putting your feet on, your hands on to give you a sense of what we have and what we don't have, which sometimes is just as important. Uh, but then on your way out, make sure you go down to the bookstore and take a look at the U new University Press bookstore. I believe there's a book signing today as well. Yes. Uh, and take the opportunity to participate in the book signing. Thank you, ladies and, and gentlemen. General Peck's going to start the receiving line right over here. <laughs> <laughs> right?